Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about King Coal. Coal demand is still high, still growing, dead in the OECD, or dying in the OECD, but massive in Asia. So what prompted this video was this post. Um, it's from Javier Blas, an analysis that uh, works for Bloomberg, and he was talking about coal demand. And we've never used as much coal as we had um, last year. Coal demand is still going up. And this is a picture of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. And every six hours, world consumes this much coal. Six hours, enough coal to build a replica of the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's quite scary to some extent. So why are people using coal? Now, coal is polluting. It's not very nice at all. It uh, produces NOx, SOx particulate smog, really nasty stuff that gives significant human health impacts. This is a picture of uh, New Delhi, India. That's India Gate, the war memorial built by Latians after World War I to Indian Army soldiers. And this is uh, a smoggy day in Delhi. It's pretty damn awful. Oh, and all, it's also very CO2 intensive, which isn't exactly very good for you either. But it's relatively cheap, it's locally available in China and India, the two main consumers for security supply. And thermal plants are reliable and they give you dispatchable electricity. So this is Energy Maslow Pyramid, which I've done a separate video on. So availability, reliability, and security, cost and availability, local impact, global impact. Um, countries that are developing are mostly concerned about the bottom parts of the pyramid. It's the global north that tends to be concerned about the green bit. So um, who uses the most coal? Well, in a word, China. So this is uh, coal usage. 1990-2023 Statistical Review of World Energy. So this big yellow bit is China. This orange bit is India. This bit here is the USA. So peaked about 2007-2008, declining since. These little uh, things here are Japan and much of the rest of Europe, as well as Korea. And these are the big developing countries. So uh, you've got South Africa, you've got Indonesia, you've also got Russia, which has declined, but still is a significant consumer. So in 2023, who used the most coal? Well, China, 56%, India, 13%, USA, about 5%, Japan, just under 3%, Indonesia, 2.5%, Russia, 2.3%, and then the rest. So basically, the world coal demand is basically this country, China, and this country, India. USA, Japan, they're all on this trajectory. Indonesia is growing quite a bit. OECD uses 15% of the world coal now, very little. Non-OECD uses 85% of the world coal. And 90% of the coal is used for electricity generation. There's also industrial heat and metallurgy, which is a, a, an important factor, but less important, far less important than electricity. So this is US coal consumption by sector. So you've got electric power, grew until about 2008, rapid decline, replaced by shale gas, also now being uh, supplemented by renewables. Then residential and commercial, so that's heat and fireplaces, transportation, well, steam trains and steamships, that's kind of a bit old school. And coke plants, this is metallurgy, and then other industrial. Again, some of that was displaced either by petroleum, coke, or by natural gas as a source of heat. So this is what coal is used for. So now let's go to the big tiger in the room, which is China. So this is uh, global coal plant capacity change since 2015. Look at the massive growth in China, big growth in India, big growth in Indonesia. All the big growth is in Asia, as well as a bit in South Africa and a bit in Turkey. Meanwhile, OECD, massive retirements in the US, significant retirements within Europe. So effectively, the world is splitting into two parts. OECD plus Russia, they've declined a little bit on coal as well. And Asia, and to some extent, uh, South Africa as well. So what does that really mean? So these are, this is a graph I did a wee while ago for a video on, uh, on coal as well. So this is China, commissioned 867,000 megawatts of coal capacity since 2000. So the blue bars are new capacity and orange bars are retirement because stations tend to get retired. Uh, coal power stations tend to have a life of about 35, 40, 50 years at most. So again, significant retirements in the USA. So there retirements in China too of old plants, but these are more than uh, being replaced by new plant. India, a lot of new plant, very little old plant being retired. Again, fast growing country and then tailing off of the rest. If you're talking about imports and exports, now China is a very significant coal importer. Looking at data from the uh, Energy Institute, they've also produced, have significant domestic production, so they're kind of balanced. 
India is a significant importer, about three quarters self-sufficient. USA, significant exporter. Japan, big importer. Korea, big importer. Others such as Indonesia have significant exports. Russia has significant exports. South Africa has significant exports. Australia is a massive exporter. But a lot of these big coal consuming countries, they have a lot of indigenous coal and that's what they're going to use. Particularly countries like China and India that have a lot less gas and a lot less domestic oil. Under those circumstances, safe, secure, indigenous domestic coal makes sense, regardless of the other impacts. If you look at China's electricity generation post-1990, so if you look at how massively it has grown, but it's not just coal. Nuclear has grown, so that's the storage bit here. Hydro has gone, so that's the Three Gorges Dam plus others. And look at this China, how China has been growing in renewables. But around 61% of the coal of uh, electricity in China is still generated by coal. That will change. You can see the percentage of fossil fuel of electricity has declined as these new sources have come on and they are growing quite fast. So what's going to happen in the future? Well, this is a little bit of history, slow growth in the 1990s, rapid growth in the 2000s, a bit of a plateau in the early 2010s, moderate growth since then. Well, I had to go at doing some forecasting. So what you have here is uh, what I've done is per capita coal consumption multiplied by population projections. So low, mid and high. So low is low population projection, low per capita. High is high population projection, high per capita. And the blue, the mid is the mean of all the cases. So I kind of predict that uh, per capita consumption is likely to decline as more non-coal power plants come in because pollution is now starting to become a big concern in China. But again, future is uncertain, so we don't know why, quite where we're going to get. But China is going to determine what's going to happen to coal in the future. So if you look at per capita, sort of steady growth, kind of plateau and potentially decline, potentially growth. But decline is likely because new technologies will take over. But a lot of consumption is baked in due to the long life of coal electricity plants, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. Build a plant 10 years ago is going to be out of action in 30 years time. But China will have more of everything. So again, I did a video on this earlier. So more solar, more wind, again, dominating new solar, dominating new wind, dominating new nuclear, also dominating hydro. It's number one in all of these things. So consumption of coal will depend on what China does, basically. India, again, uh, kind of growth then beginning exponential growth and a few hiccups, but we don't know. Future's uncertain. Again, same methodologies I did for the China forecasting. Coal versus nuclear versus hydro versus renewables. What will India's new generation strategy be? Having said that, some of the new, some of the coal plants in India are a lot newer. So again, quite a lot of consumption is already baked in. If you look at USA, well, it's, it's quite a different picture. So this is USA electricity generation. So that's coal in the in the uh, grey, uh, natural gas in the turquoise light blue. Again, basically, gas replacing coal from about 2007, fracked gas, cheap gas, and also coming in now wind and solar as well, and potentially a nuclear renaissance. But coal consumption in the US is declining, it's likely to decline further. That's kind of baked in the cake. Looking at uh, other people's forecasts, so my forecasts here for the world are in, um, in solid colors, so that's high mid and low. So some forecasts from the IEA based in Paris, they have a net zero forecast and they have a um, AP announced policies forecast and they have a uh, effectively continuity forecast. Now, I'm sorry, net zero is not going to happen like that. I can't see it happening. Um, announced policies, well, perhaps conceivable, but this is more likely. Two scenarios from Shell mountains and sky sky is more in a renewables forecast scenario so that's slightly lower than my low case but you know well credible mountains is somewhat higher than my mid case again that's more of an isolated case where you've got islands effectively of um, economic blocks who have quite different ideas and this is bp's continuity scenario which is similar to my mid case so again futures uncertain you have to try to look at some ideas of what might be and might not be possible and this is history in the, in the dark gray so sum up, King Cole's far from dead, he's just moved to Asia. China accounts for more than half, 56% of the global demand, so Chinese policy decisions are crucial. What they decide is what determines the future of coal. 
India is the next most important countries. And there's an energy trilemma. I've got a video on my channel on energy trilemma, looking at cost, security, and pollution, and how this three interact. And energy Maslow, which is looking at it from a global south point of view, where you start off with affordability, then cost and availability, then local uh, impact, and then global impact. Now, coal demands decline and will continue to decline to the OECD, but this matters less now. It's just not relevant anymore that much. And there's growth in other Asian countries, Vietnam, Indonesia, and also South Africa. What will happen to those countries? Now, South Africa's had a little bit of a hiccup lately because they've had some big gas discoveries by Total off the Cape uh, Coast, where Total has now said that they're not economic. Uh, these are gas discoveries in deep water. Um, could be coal bed methane. Where on earth are they going to go? Also, what about potential for shale gas in China? Could China replicate what America had done? It's conceivable. So thank you very much. Please like and please subscribe. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.